Call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll try to um, make this as expeditious as possible. I realize it's pretty warm out here. Um, we'll start off by the Pledge of Allegiance, and the flag is over your shoulder. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, now we'll have the reading of the town warrant. Pursuant to within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the town office building, the Sunderland Public Library, and the Sunderland Post Office, seven days at least before the date hereof as within directed. Frederick A. Laurinaitis, June 2nd, 2021, 1 o'clock p.m. All right, and every year we have uh, dedications and uh, selectmen are gonna read those. Each year we have an opportunity to recognize an individual or group who has contributed their expertise, talents, and or passion to the betterment of our community. Many groups or individuals have been recognized over the years having served our town in ways that make Sunderland great. This year we would like to dedicate our annual report to our Sunderland community itself. 2020 has been a very different year presenting new challenges and situations that impacted everyone in our community in many ways. We would like to recognize all of those contributions. We acknowledge the school administration and committee for their work at reopening classrooms and maintaining a quality education, the Board of Health's efforts in dealing with all of the varied information and new or expanded responsibilities due to COVID, as well as working with the area businesses who are trying to provide safe services and remain open. The town clerk for running national elections, primaries, and all the associated functions that must have been performed to have an election, including registrations, rounding up election workers, and securing the voters' safety. The library for maintaining contact through their Zoom gatherings and the continuance of book, tape, and other media sharing, and the continuation of bringing programs to its patrons. The police, fire, and South County Ambulance and Highway for the continuation of their critical functions without missing a beat. Committees and boards that found creative ways to keep what some would consider ordinary functions, but we learned are critical moving forward. In addition, the town office staff was amazing and resilient, taking whatever was thrown at them while maintaining a positive attitude and a can-do attitude. Our business community that found new and innovative ways to stay solvent and to maintain a sense of normalcy to our lives with COVID protocols in place. And finally, to our residents who continue to stay involved with their community, sacrificing and supporting one another, having Zoom play dates, drive-by graduations and birthday parties, and kind words and thoughts to friends who are not able to attend or hold remembrances services for lost loved ones. We cannot ignore the frontline community workers that may not get the plumbers build, excuse me, may not get the press, but really keep our society moving. Sanitation workers, electricians, plumbers, builders, DPW staff, custodial staff, and grocery and convenience staff. We know that our Sunderland community has supported one another through crises situations before, but we could not ignore recognizing Sunderland's community spirit when needed this year. Thank you for your support, your courage, and your cooperation this year. And now we have the spirit of Sunderland. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This year's the spirit of Sunderland and recognition goes to the Community Pathways Committee. Several years a group, several years ago, a group of residents had a vision and brainstormed ideas for enhancing and promoting Sunderland's natural beauty. The committee's charge was formalized by the Select Board in 2015. The committee expressed that they believe that our town offers a unique balance of rural charm and small town bustle. Our abundant agricultural and forested lands create a rural atmosphere, but key businesses and attractions in the town center generate a vibrant energy and sense of community. The committee believes that this balance presents a valuable opportunity for fostering community interaction, enhancing resident health, and stimulating our local economy. They wanted to 
create an all-inclusive accessible pathway around the river, safe pathways, roadways, and sidewalks for pedestrians and bicycle use for the community and elementary school. The committee is comprised of town boards and committee members along with community representation. They have seen their vision materialize due to CPA, various grant funds, and donations. Many enhancements are being enjoyed to date, including a kickoff celebration opening the Sunderland Riverside Park in 2019. The new walkways around town have proven to be an exceptional addition, especially during the COVID-19 period. Even though several goals have been completed, the, com the committee has more to offer and is still committed to keep the momentum going. They have worked tirelessly on this mission with the ultimate goal of a more appreciative an accessible community environment for all to enjoy. Thank you to the Community Pathway Committee members, past and present, for your commitment to the betterment of our town. And we also, in the town, uh, town report, have an in memoriam for people we have lost during the past year. This page serves as a remembrance of individuals whom we have lost this year. They have served our community, whether as an employee, a board member, commission member, or a committee member. Some positions may now be named a little differently versus years ago. However, the responsibility and commitment to our community remains the same. Robert Bardos. Bob served as animal control officer and dog officer for many years. He was also an auxiliary officer. Stanley J. Michkowski. Stanley served on the Veterans Memorial Oversight Committee and was also a member of the Ditch Committee. And Victor Zambruski. Victor served as constable and was an election officer as well for many years. Before we get started, you notice that we have a slightly different makeup over here on the uh, my right or uh, left, and that's because Scott Bergeron is no longer a selectman, and uh, we've had a change. And I just want to say that um, how grateful I am for Scott having served for 18 years. Um, it takes uh, having done it for only six. It takes a tremendous amount of time and dedication. And Scott was one of the best. He knew those numbers, and I just want to give him a nice round of applause. All right, now we'll get down to nitty gritty, which involves introducing everybody. Uh, I'm Mike Wisseman, I'm the moderator. This is theoretically my meeting, um, so thank you for coming. Uh, I'll have the selectmen introduce themselves. Tom Payton-Kevitt. David Pierce. Crystal Drake Tremblay. Jeff, town administrator. Jeff Gravitz. Wendy. Wendy Hull, town clerk, she has no microphone. <laughs> this is David Jenkins, Town Council. Linda Forge, Finance Committee. And if the members of the uh, school committees could, they're going to pass a mic around. If you could stand, we could put a face to a name. No. I thought this was a good idea. Greg Gottschalk, School Committee. Judy Pierce. Frontier School Committee. Peter Gagarin, Elementary School Committee. Jessica Corwin, Elementary School Committee. Megan Arquin, <laughs> Sunderland Elementary School Committee. Thank you. Uh, any representatives from the tech school? John Carey, resident of town, assistant principal, Franklin County Tech. And school administration. Darius Modesto, superintendent of schools. Shelley Perita, director of business administration. Ben Barshevsky, Principal, Sunderland Elementary School.
Okay, thank you. Anybody we forgot? All right, thank you. Um, so I'm going to read what I have in front of me here. The COVID restrictions have lessened, lessened since last year. All we ask is you sit and participate where you feel comfortable. Please be within my eyesight so I can see the voting cards, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I guess I'll talk about them right now. Everybody's, everyone's got your little kit here. Same system as last year. Green means yes. Yellow means you have a question. And wait, and someone with a microphone will come over and find you, and we'll make sure the microphone's working, and then you can speak. And no means no. Red, thank you. Any questions on that? All right, when we go through the uh, budget, we'll do it like we've always done. We'll go section by section. If you have a hold on a section so we can go back and revisit it and you can ask a question about that section, please raise your question card, your yellow card, and we'll mark it down and revisit it. Um, amendments need to be in writing. Um, we'll provide a paper and pen and then uh, bring them forward to us. Uh, thank everybody for coming to the meeting. It's hot Saturday afternoon, and during the summer is not the best time to get people out, but you guys made it, which is great. Um, and the other last note is probably obvious. We want to uh, make sure people have time to have their input, but we also want to keep things moving along, so that's my job. So. Um, I think we'll uh, start by having a motion. I'm looking for a motion to dispense with the reading of motions. Motion. I have a second. Second. Everybody in favor? Practice a practice round. Everybody in favor? Hold up that green card. Anybody opposed? Hold up the yellow card. Oh, I'm, no! Don't hold up the yellow card. No, red card. Red card. Good thing we're practicing. It's a good thing we're practicing. Yeah. Okay, one, one red card for practice. Okay, uh, declare a majority. <laughs> I have to be able to read it. Okay, um, and secondly, we need a motion to allow school officials, town council, and other employees permission to speak. Do I hear a motion? motion. Second. Second. Everyone in favor, green card. Those opposed, red card. Declare unanimous, thank you. Okay, lastly, um, before we start, explain that um, I'm allowed to declare a two-thirds vote. There's certain articles uh, funding-wise that if we hit stabilization fund, et cetera, I, that require a two-thirds vote, I can declare um, it's one by two-thirds. If anybody questions that, all it takes is seven people and you can, we'll have another vote. Um, with the cards, it's going to be easier to determine that than just verbally, I think, anyways. Okay, we need to square in the tellers, please. So you have to come forward. Liz Sillen, Lauren Starr, Natalie Blay, and Deb Bennett. You were printed on there already. Okay, Tom Feinikevich likes to say a couple of words. Thanks. At, at this time, we are just coming out of 400 days of change. 
I wanted to uh, publicly thank a few people from the board. The first we'd like to recognize is our state elected representative, representative Natalie Blay, and our state senator, Joe Comerford. When, when Stan and Steve uh, decided not to seek reelection, um, it's very, very difficult to try to replace their years of experience and their knowledge of Boston. And there was, there was a concern that we elect the right people in those positions. I can tell you from the town of Sunland's perspective, the board, we have elected the right individuals. Natalie and Joe continually contacted the town at times daily, sometimes hourly, to find out what the town needed in all our departments. And they were in continual contact with our town administrator like, like never had been seen before. They truly represented what our town needed and our community needed during this time. And Natalie and Joe, the board would like to thank you for that service. The, the second thing is our committees and our employees. At one point, our superintendent of schools was just Modesto, Mr. Doctor. Our superintendent, he was a superintendent. Today, he is a member of our, he always has been, but to those that don't have children in school, he is our, a member of our community. When, when we had trouble uh, providing meals to our seniors, Frontier, through Modesto, stood up, made, it, made meals available to our seniors, breakfast to our seniors. Didn't have to do it, he did it. When there was a need for education to continue, Frontier and Union 38 were, were not just a step ahead of most, they were miles ahead. Our, and we can only thank them for the work that they did. It was truly outstanding. Our committees and boards, school committee, I don't know how many meetings that you guys have had, um, but at the meetings, you always were respectful of one another. You thoroughly discussed the pros and cons, and you came up with a decision. And then once a decision was made, it was 100% supported. I just wish we could see that in a lot of different places. But thank you for that work. All of other Board of Health, I can guarantee you when somebody ran for the Board of Health, they never knew what was the next or the past 400 days were going to entail. I, I would like to thank them. I would like to also thank, personally thank our town clerk, town administrator, and our Sunderland staff. Librarian, the people that work in the library, highway department, you, you guys have done amazing things during that time. And, and each and every one of us are greatly happy and thankful that you, you have been there for us. And finally, for Scott Bergeron, David, Crystal, it's, it's very difficult sometimes sitting in these chairs, but we can honestly say that with having the staff, the committees, the boards that we are surrounded with, you guys make it easy. And, and we want to thank you guys for everything that you've done over the last 400 plus days. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, Article One. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article One. Second. 
Are there any questions on Article 1? All those in favor of Article 1, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare unanimous. Article 2. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 2. Second it. Any questions on Article 2? All those in favor of Article 2, green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Declare unanimous. Article 3. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 3. Second. Any questions on Article 3? All those in favor of Article 3, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare that unanimous. Article 4. This is Scott Bergeron's favorite one. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 4. Second. Any questions on Article 4? No questions, Scott? <laughs> All those uh, in favor of Article 4, please raise your green card. Those opposed, red card. Declare unanimous. Okay. Which is the budget one? Oh, okay. I should run through the whole thing. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I thought it was Article 5. We, we can uh, review that if you want to go through it section by section. Okay, there we go. There we go. That was my, uh, I'm, kind, I've kind of, I'm kind of ski blinded up here, so I'll use that as an excuse. That's never passed so fast, has it? I told you we were going to be fast. Okay, here we go. So let's go back to uh, Article 4. How do you do this procedurally if it's already passed? Well, no. We'll, we'll just go through. We'll go through it and see if it becomes con okay. Okay. So I guess we'll we'll pretend I didn't do that, although it did pass. But let's go through um, let's go through the budget section by section. If you have questions, um, we can go and address those afterwards. So everybody got a copy. Uh, any questions on total general government? Any questions on town buildings? Total police department. Total fire department. Inspectors and other protection. Total highway. Uh, total health and sanitation. The library, uh, elementary school, okay. Um, Franklin County Tech Assessment, okay. Uh, Frontier Assessment. Out of district tuition and transport. Total benefits and insurance. Total miscellaneous and reserve fund. All right, any questions on the wastewater treatment plant? Any questions on total debt and interest? 
All right. So I have, um, that's it, right? I got it all. Okay. Michael, do you want to just tell, do you want to just tell everybody that on the debt interest that the uh, library and the public safety complex are no longer, will no longer be on the system? Okay, great. That we're at the end of the cycle. We're at the end of the cycle. We're at the end of the cycle. Okay. Uh, Tom just pointing out that on debt and interest, the library, I get a, and what else? And the library and public safety are at the end of the, the debt cycle, so they'll be removed. So those are all paid off. All right, so we're going to go back and revisit any questions you guys had, which were... Total elementary school. Somebody raised a card on that. Hi, I was just um, thinking this was an opportunity for particularly for those of us who don't have kids in school to just hear how things have been going, um, how much in-person versus remote learning our students have had, what the infection rate's been, pool testing, how the teachers and staff are doing. Do we feel students have lost learning, what the summer plans are, and how we used um, stimulus and other COVID relief funding? Um, so I've got no gripes with the budget. I just think it's a nice, be nice to know what's been happening. Ben? Can you get Ben a microphone over here, please? Hi, everyone. Ben Barshevsky, Principal Sunderland Elementary School. Uh, beginning uh, the second week of September, we opened our doors for in-person learning. At that time, we had our students with our, the most significant and complex needs. And a couple weeks later, we brought in more of our vulnerable learners. And then at the beginning of October, uh, just at the end of September, beginning of October, we opened the doors for in-person learning for all families who wanted to go that route. And that was either for two days or four days. Um, at some point, late winter, early spring, we opened our doors um, for all students to have the option of coming to school for four days. And then beginning of April, those who did select the in-person model were there for five days a week. As the year progressed, we had more and more students coming back. Um, right at the beginning of the year, we had approximately 55% of our students in person and another 45% remote. And then by the end of the school year, with approximately 190 students in our school, all but 15 were remote, um, which was absolutely incredible. Uh, from a COVID safety standpoint, we were very successful. We did have a few cases in the school this year. Um, but due to different health and safety mitigation strategies, we had zero spread. Um, we had the Abbott Binex antigen test, which was for symptomatic, both symptomatic staff and students. And uh, that was in place partway through the beginning of the school year. And then we were, um, our district signed up for pool testing. Um, which was for all students and staff um, to get swabbed, for those parents who signed up their students to get swabbed at the beginning of the week. And that was highly successful as well. And that did um, produce uh, actually one, one positive case, but once again, no, no school spread. I think another question was how, the, how is the staff doing? Um, they're exhausted. It was, it was a very trying year. Um, by far the most demanding year that any of us as educators have had. Uh, balancing the ever-changing health and safety guidelines, switching from uh, remote to in-person, back and forth was taxing. Many of our teachers had to teach uh, both platforms at the same time. And that in itself was uh, in a very, very big challenge. Um, I do want to commend um, uh, the Sunderland Elementary School staff, a, a couple times during the year when Sunderland was in the red and the doors were closed for um, students and staff, 
we did have a small number of students in our building, those with the most significant needs, um, come back with, with some staff members. Um, and you know, the remote learning model does not work for all learners. And for some students to be able to show, show growth and not really suffer from the remote learning platform, they have to be in person. Um, so that was very commendable. In terms of summer programming, we're taking a few weeks off and then we have a summer learning academy starting up July 6th, and that's running uh, through July 29th uh, from 8.30 to 12 o'clock each day, uh, four days a week. And we have a handful of students across all grade levels uh, signed up for that. We have a intensive needs program running in the summer and a preschool program as well. Did I miss anything? Any other questions? Peter. Just like to add a couple things. Um, one of the questions was about uh, the uh, aid that we'd gotten from state and federal sources during this. Uh, that's been absolutely essential for maintaining operations in the school. If I look back 15 months ago, I was just terrified at how bad the financial situation seemed like it was going to be. Uh, but first, we got something called the CARES Act for, uh, th th that we used in this past school year to uh, get all sorts of technology, both the hardware, the, the devices, where we went from having maybe one for, one for every two kids to up to one for each kid, up to probably one and a quarter per kid because they break, they need repairs, they get whatever. So. Um, we had that, we had all sorts of new software that we were needing in order to do remote education. Uh, we upgraded the ventilation system in the building. Um, and so that CARES money really got us through this year. And then there have been a couple more grants that have come through from the feds, but this is straight to the schools. Uh, and that we're using be mainly for paying uh, wages for the cafeteria staff and for the early childhood program, those were two programs where we uh, were unable to operate anywhere near the normal uh, way, and so the revenue that we would get from them pretty much disappeared. And I had thought that, again, at this point, we would be deep in the hole in both areas. Uh, right now, in fact, we're, we're in the black, and by the end of this next year, we're projected to be well in the black, and that means going forward, our finances are just way more solid than I ever would have guessed they would be. Uh, the other thing I just want to say is Ben spoke uh, about the education that's going on in the school. Uh, I think I need to speak uh, just generally about, uh, number one, the quality of the leadership we've had uh, at the school, and that's, that's Darius, the superintendent, that's Shelley, the director of business administration, and that's Ben, the principal. Uh, you may, some of you I'm sure know it, but some of you may not realize how good our leadership is, okay? It's, it's, I've been involved in, in town stuff for probably 30 years, and this is far and away the best administration we've had running the school system here. Uh, and that's, that's no exaggeration, that's just a straight out truth. Uh, and then in addition, uh, just the school committee, the last thing we did at our meeting on Monday night would just pass a motion to express our thanks and our admiration for everybody that works at the school, okay? For everybody that does anything to help the education of our children in Sunderland for all they've done this past year. Under the most difficult circumstances you could imagine, under continually changing circumstances, they have showed up every day and they've given their absolute best and Cannot thank them enough. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Peter. Okay, in the sec next section that we had a question about was the Franklin County Tech Assessment. Scott? Thanks, Mr. Moderator, if I could. How much of this uh, is driven, reduction is driven by enrollment, and what's the risk going forward in town? And if I could, inside the four corners of the question, uh, how much of the next line under is enrollment 
versus uh, general assessment. Thank you, Scott. Uh, the assessment reduction, which is significant, is based on an enrollment in the current year from 10 to 8. And, um, but also it's balanced by the fact that the tech schools looking at the highest enrollment in recent history, probably from 1976. We're expecting 610 freshmen. We accepted 162, which is just at capacity with a wait list of over 50. And that is offsetting over the 19 towns in the county, the per town assessment. Okay, thank you. With that, we already passed this, so I think any, any other questions on the budget, we'll move on. Okay, thank you. You hear that? Do I have a second on Article 5? I'll second. All right, are there questions on Article 5? This is uh, a transfer from stabilization and requires a two thirds vote. Any questions on Article 5? All right, all those in favor of Article 5, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare unanimous, thank you. Article 6. Mr. Moderator, I vote to move Article 6. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second on Article 6. Any questions on Article 6? All right. You want an explanation? You want a quick explanation? Sure. So, so basically what this is is that the Franklin County is swapping over to a new radio system. Presently we work on a 400 megawatt system. We're going to go megahertz system. Now we're going to an 800 megahertz um, and so basically new antennas, new equipment, and this is the, just a portion of the total expense that we'll see for this total swap over. But basically it'll give our police, fire, EMS, better communications throughout our town and when they get deployed on mutual aid as well. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, all those in favor of Article 6 green card, please. Those opposed, red card, declare unanimous. Article 7. Mr. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 7, please. Second. You want, to, you want to give an explanation? You want to talk about that, Jim? Or do you want to? I think the school, yeah. Ask Ben, then we'll talk. Ben, you want to speak to this? Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, this is our obligation for post-retirement uh, post benefits, and so instead of putting it into the budget and raising the overall budget, because retirements happen from year to year, it's better off to bring it to the town this way rather than inflating the budget in order to cover costs in years where we have retirements versus years we don't. So it's the retirement cost of um, retiring teachers. Okay, any questions? Mr. Moderator, if I could please? Yep. We, we started doing this a few years ago, um, and, and what it does is it helps seeing large, large swings in the elementary school budget, and this was something between the school administration, school committee, and board that we felt would give us better control and better understanding also of, of the budget and how it's funded. All right, Article 7. All those in favor of Article 7, green card. Those opposed, red card. 
Declare it unanimous. Article 8. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 8. I second it. Is the chief here? Yeah, could you give an explanation? No. Hi, Eric Dimitropoulos, Chief of Police here in Sunderland and resident. Uh, we're asking for $7,000 to replace the existing handguns that the police department has. The last time they were replaced in uh, 2008. Any questions? There's one question. Yes, sir. Handguns never wear out. So how much have they been used? It's actually a very uh, good question. The, the handguns themselves, are, are, the officers are utilizing them every year for qualifications and trainings. They have not been used to uh, uh, and other decisions, uh, other than maybe perhaps having to kill an animal that was uh, hit by a car. But mostly the officers are qualifying every year and doing firearms training every year. Uh, handguns, I understand, don't wear out, but the reliability of those handguns for the officers for the time they may need it, we want to make sure that it's up there and not having any issues that arise. We also don't have any armorers within the police department to repair the, uh, the issues that are going on with the, the handguns, we have to send them out or try to replace them from uh, a handgun we have that's maybe extra. So we want to get away from that and then go back to a, a newer system. How many handguns is this, Eric? Fifteen. Any other questions? Okay, Article 8. Those in favor of Article 8, please raise your green card. Those opposed, red card. Declare majority. Passed by majority, that is. Okay, number nine. Mr. Moderator, can you look at Article 9? Second. Want an explanation? Okay. Talk about any, any questions on Article 9? You want to give an explanation of sure. the district? M Mr. Moderator? Um, I wanted an explanation and some background on this, please. Absolutely. Mr. Moderator, if I may, please. Basically, um, earlier earlier this year, they there there's a few diseases that are born um, by mosquitoes, triple E, uh, Zika, um, amongst other. And basically, the state had notified us is that they were going to come out and um, if there's an outbreak of these diseases, what they wanted to do is come out and they just wanted to start potentially doing aerial spraying of the community. So the town had an option to opt out of that. We on the board talked about it and we also looked into this the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. And that's been established for, for a couple years now. And basically what the Mosquito Control Board does, it will it has a, an, an employee that will go around the town of Sunderland. It will trap mosquitoes, test mosquitoes, um, and basically define where in town mosquitoes are, the number, and if they're, and provide us with data so that we know where we can target those areas with very specific, if, if we do have an outbreak of disease, we can very, specifically target areas with backpack um, or truck mount spraying versus just coming in and spraying our entire community. So basically joining the Mosquito 
of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control is going to start allowing us to start collect data so that we can make informed decisions and if we do have a problem we can target areas that need to have spraying and or some other type of uh, remediation. You have another question? <coughs> Um, is there more information about how you determine if there is a problem? I mean, I have concerns about this. It sounds really great to collect data and better understand the problem, um, but I wanted to know a little bit more about, like, if it was determined that there's a problem and they do conduct spraying, would residents be notified? Like, I just would like to, I'd feel more comfortable if I knew even more about potential for spraying. Oh, ab absolutely, and, 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 that's, and that, was, that, was our, that was our biggest concern about aerial spraying, and that we just, by opting out of the program, um, it allowed us to have better control that we can share the data with our communities. Um, and we, I, I guess if we did have a problem that, that started, um, that, that was ear rearing its ugly head, we would, We'd go through public hearings. We would do the public notification through the code red, uh, the reverse 91 telephone calls. We would have the uh, the board, the board would have meetings, and and we would uh, entertain uh, conversations with our with our residents before that started. Absolutely. So I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. So this would involve collecting data on mosquitoes now and whether or not they may carry diseases. And then if the town were to see a need to move towards spraying, there would be public hearings and a public process for it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And, 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 and I, when you say about the state collecting data right now, mm -hmm. I, I can't guarantee you that the, the state collects data except for if someone sends them a mosquito to have surveyed. So, so basically what we wanted, we wanted to be able to offer our community, if something does happen, we wanted to be able to offer them information so that we, we could pinpoint those areas specifically versus just having somebody come in with a broad swipe and just broadcast whatever they broadcast along our town. So absolutely, we, we, we thought we'd do this. This would give us better control and more, more information to our residents. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, oh. that, so if, um, even if you needed to do targeted spraying, we would have the opportunity to know about Ab it. Absolutely. Okay. And, and that, and that, and, and thank you because that, that's, that's what we wanted all, all along. We, we want, we want to have anything done in our community based on, on data, not on just someone saying, yeah, you, you need to do this without data. So right. that, that was our, and, and just right now, Technically, it costs five thousand dollars to join the mosquito district, and we we negotiated with them. And you see the the, the cost of three thousand yeah. dollars. That that's so that we can get our feet in to understand what's happening, and if the if it really if the if, if the information is worth it for us. So we we negotiated a price of three thousand dollars to get started to understand exactly what's what belonging to the district is going to bring for us. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions on Article 9? Okay, all those in favor of Article 9, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. I declare unanimous. Article 10. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 10, please. Second. Any questions on Article 10? Have, the, have these changed since last year? Yes. Yes, they have. Um, uh, the wiring inspector limit was raised, I believe, from 9,000 to 20,000. Plumbing inspector was raised from 3,000 to 6,000. Um, I believe the community room was raised from, I think it was about 7,500 to 15,000, um, and then fire inspectors went up, I think, from 7,000 or 7,500 to 10,000. Uh, most of this was due to recently uh, fees went up as well, so we wanted to 
be able to make sure that our inspectors were getting paid um, for the inspector inspections they were doing. And then as far as the, and increased activity, um, 120 North Main or Sanderson Place is, is still happening. There's gonna be electrical and plumbing and gas inspections there. Um, and then for the library community room, most of the purchases used out of the revolving fund are for large purchases, um, projectors, you know, in, in the thousands of dollars. So we wanted to make sure that they um, had full access to make the larger purchases. All right, any questions? Article 10, all those in favor of Article 10, a green card please. All those opposed, a red card. Uh, declare unanimous. Article 11. Just a moderator, I'd like to move Article 11. I second. Okay, Article 11, then we're running it to like, into the CPA articles. Um, Peter Jessup is needing a microphone. <laughs> he, do, he doesn't want to, do you want to do any explanation of this, Article 11? No, I, I, think, I think the CPA articles, I'm Peter Jessup, I'm co-chair. Uh, is Megan here? Megan is sitting over there, my other co-chair for the CPA committee, uh, and um, I don't. I think I think if you have specific questions about each article, um, I think that's the best way to handle that. And and uh, we want to thank the residents of Sunderland for coughing up for the CPA. I mean, the, we, the the community has done amazing things with the money over the years, and I hope we can continue that. So I think if there are questions about specific articles, that will be fine. Uh, ben, sure. Ben, I, um, ben, yeah, actually, we, yeah. the CPA committee receives these requests from various entities in the town, and um, the folks are much more able, the folks who submit those proposals are much more able to speak to what this is. So with respect to Article 11, I would ask Ben to, to comment on that. Thanks, Peter. Uh, as the town is aware, we came to the town a few years back and applied for seed funding through CPA to go towards the early childhood playground project. And that was going to go towards the site analysis and conceptual design. Uh, since that time, uh, we have been working with a landscape architecture group. They came in with a total playground price of around $410,000, which was extremely high. Um, but that's the cost of playgrounds these days if you were to contract everything out. Since that time, we've been able to do some fundraising and through in-kind donations, working with local businesses, we've been able, been able to reduce that cost by approximately $80,000. Um, additionally, in that cost of four hundred ten, dollars um, there was a, uh, around $94,000 of contingency and contractor O and P. The majority of the playground, um, the much of the money is going to go towards the site renovation, the safety surface, and the main play structures. We, um, if this passes, we would be able to, um, with this two hundred thousand dollars, break ground. We've been working with the landscape architecture group to reduce costs, like I had mentioned, but also divide this project into. Uh, different phases. With that $200,000, the, the majority of the playground will be able to be completed. Um, also, I've met with the uh, Massachusetts Office of uh, Disabilities, and we are going to be applying for an ADA grant this fall. Um, and although nothing is guaranteed, approximately 125 or 130,000 or so of um, components components of the playground could fall under that grant. And there's going to be a playground website up and running soon where uh, people can make additional do donations. Um, we are hoping to reduce costs again, like I mentioned with the ADA grant, raising additional funds through volunteer labor, and also reset the contingency. We feel that uh, with us running the show, we'll be able to co be able to control Control cost. 
the phase one would feature the asphalt walkway, drainage, redoing the safety surface, installing a main play structure, wood fiber surfacing, and boulders. Phase two would feature some smaller elements, some spinning elements, some swings, a climbing boulder, and um, phase three, some more odds and ends. But we really feel that with this $200,000, we'll be able to um, possibly complete the project. And if there are any other specific questions, I'd be happy to answer. Hi, Ben, since you're standing right next to me. When was the last time the playground was renovated? Like, it has to be over 20 years. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I believe it was 99, 2000, 2001 timeline. So it's uh, the playground right now is not ADA compliant. A couple of years back, um, the regulations were changed. We have P-Stone as a safety service right now. And with the new regulations, the safety surface needs to be poured in place. And this will help uh, allow for success for the diverse student body that we have at uh, Sunderland to be able to access and um, use this valuable time of their elementary school days. Any other questions for Ben? Thanks, Ben. All right, it looks like we're ready to vote Article 11. All those in favor of Article 11, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Uh, declare it unanimous, thank you. Article 12. Anybody from Graves Memorial want to discuss? This is your submission. Yeah, this was uh, Hello? This, um, this was something submitted uh, by myself, um, and it was to continue to make sure that the Graves Memorial Library is in good condition. Um, uh, it was based on the uh, Roy Brown architecture building assessment that was done in 2018 um, and it's for repointing of the brickwork um, and so we're, we're hoping to do at a, at a minimum the um, inside basement and repoint that because that's structurally uh, the most important and then depending on where we wind up with funds as anybody who's doing construction or having construction done knows it's very costly right now. Um, we would try and do uh, the exterior of the building as well. All right, any questions for Jeff? Scott. If I could, Mr. Moderator, it's not so much a question as it's continued background. It was probably six years ago we commissioned uh, town meeting appropriated funds for a building survey to help with uh, capital planning going forward for a 10, 20, 30 year horizon. And uh, this is one of those projects that was called out. A building that we walked by, it's a beautiful piece in the center of the town. Meanwhile, the street's a bit of a mess, but the building looks great. However, the repointing was called out as something that could help with the long standing uh, service uh, for the building. And you'll see, I expect in the future years, more of these that reports uh, available and some of the tasks have already been completed and that's been really really helpful but the graves uh, building this is the first pass at it so just building on what Jeff said and I want to thank Jeff personally for uh, uh, running this forward because I was on capital planning I handed it to him and said see ya and he did a great job thanks any other questions or comments article 12 Aaron Hi, will this reporting mostly be a cosmetic type of alteration or is it a real structural um, change that will address the, some of the main cracks and faults in the walls of the building? So uh, we had a, a mason come out and take a look at it. They 
did not seem particularly concerned with the structural, uh, if any, didn't notice any structural issues um, in the basement or any of the walls. So um, obviously they, they said some of the mortar was um, starting to crumble a little bit and that, that that could be replaced and it would ultimately lead to structural issues. They didn't see any immediate need. So at this point it's more avoiding future structural issues, I'd say. Um, so it, not, not solely cosmetic would be my point. Anybody else? Okay, so we're going to vote Article 12. All those in favor of Article 12, green card. All those opposed, a red card. Declare it majority passed. Okay, Article 13. Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, if I could, I'd like to uh, move Article 13. Second. Yeah, I think, go ahead, Jeff. So this article is related to uh, the park grant that we received for the next phase of the Riverside Park um, improvements. And part of the park grant was to dig a well and install a pump. And there's not much that we're gonna do with a pump and a well, so we wanted to actually have funds to put in the irrigation system. So that would irrigate the soccer field behind you all and then the related baseball field back there. Any questions? Scott? So if you could just uh, point out the value of the park grant, I think it's important that we allow that information out because we're going to contribute a little, but we've grew, we've asked for quite a bit. Yeah. So the the total of the park grant was two hundred and seventy eight thousand uh, dollars, of which the town responsibility is thirty four percent, and um, the majority of that was from last year's. Um, kayak kiosk CPA article. That's that's the town match for the park grant. Mr. Moderator, if I may, please. Yes. And and I would just like to add, um, this goes back to the pathway committee and a lot of the work that they did. But these are very these are very very competitive grants, and we have been exceptionally. Luck, I'll say lucky, but for anybody that's ever dealt with the state government, luck is not an appropriate word, Natalie. <laughs> um, and and I, I will say that, that it was a program, it was a plan, the program, and all the details that were worked on by the pathway and, and others that made that grant available. And, and I, you know, also the one thing is that we plan on looking at digging the well, but if we dig a well and we get down so far and there's no water, which may happen even though you're next to the river, uh, we, won't, we won't be putting in an irrigation system. We won't be using that money. But th this is really um, culmination of some great work that was done by a great group of people. Any other questions? Okay. Article 13, those in favor, oh, yeah, hold on. I just wondered if it's possible to, um, as part of this irrigation process, to collect rainwater to use as well in the irrigation system. Susan, I, I, that hasn't that wasn't specifically in the in the uh, in the request, but we can actually we'll, we will look at that. Yes. Anything else? Last chance. Okay. Article 13. Those in favor of Article 13, green card. 
Those opposed to red card. Uh, passed unanimously. Okay, Article 14. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 14. Second. Staying with the theme here. Yeah. So um, this is also related to the park grant and the Riverside Park improvements. Um, we had, had originally um, budgeted just for a basic rehabilitation of the restrooms to make them ADA accessible, um, looking at the plans and again the, the cost of construction. Um, we thought that it would be helpful to um, have a little bit of additional breathing room. Um, so we had this CPA request to give us that breathing room to make sure that we can actually have a, a usable bathroom that, that's ADA accessible. Any questions on that? All right, Article 14. Those in favor of Article 14, green card. Those opposed, the red card. Passed unanimously. Thank you. The okay, Article 15. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 15. Second. You want to explain this, Peter? Again, I'm, I'm Peter Jessup, chair, co-chair of the uh, CPA committee. So each year we're required to uh, appropriate certain percentages of our CPA funds that are unspent to reserves for historic resources, community housing, and open space reserve as well as anything that we desire to put into what we call an undesignated budget reserve. So this, um, this Warren article takes care of that along with appropriating $6,000 for administrative expenses for the committee, of which we don't usually spend most of that. But um, And then in addition to that, we have community preservation debt service, uh, which pays for loans that we've taken out for past projects. So it would be very helpful to pass this article because if we don't appropriate the debt service, we cause a pretty serious problem for the select board. And I think we'd like to avoid that if we could. Isn't that right, Tom? To tell, to tell you the truth, Peter, there, if someone asked me to explain this article where all the money goes and how it gets there, I have no idea. And, 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 that, and I, I, I say this without reserve. If it, would, if it wasn't for people like Jennifer and our treasurer, collector, accountant, and Peter, they, the, the, this, this, these numbers changed right up to the last day that we put the warrant together. And, and if you talk about a group that looks into the minutia of something, Jennifer, Peter, and those, that group, my hats are off to you because I couldn't explain it. And I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Although... Some may want me to. So with that in mind, this is your chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Article 15, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor of Article 15, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Uh, passed unanimously, thank you. Okay, Article 16. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 16, please. Second. You want to explain? This is a Board of Health, but. Are there questions on this article? Got to hold up the right card. Are you going to explain or? No. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Or Jeff. Um, Bruce Bennett, Board of Health. Uh, basically what this is, is we very rarely assess fines to people that violate the Board of Health regulations and things like that. And there's no means to enforce it. 
And this way, if we issue a non-criminal disposition and a person ignores it, there's a lien placed on the real estate. And this is also going to cover other uh, boards, I believe, like dog fees and things like that. And it's similar to what happens if you don't pay your real estate taxes, there's a lien placed on your property. If you don't pay your water bill, there's a lien placed on your property. And if you don't pay your sewer bill, there's a lien placed on your property. Um, it's just a way that we can eventually collect the money that's owed to the town. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to add that, you know, it, I think this is a, a, a remedy of last resort. It's not going to be you, you're five days late on paying your fine, you get a lien put on your property. We've got out, tried to, tried to collect it several times. There's no response. There's no payment. This is a, a final step to make sure that the town can recoup um, their costs. Any questions on Article 16? All right. Um, all those in favor of Article 16, green card. All those opposed, the red card. Uh, passed unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Article 17. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 17. I second. Jessica Corwin is going to speak on this article. Hi, this um, proposed bylaw is identical with the exception of the town name to one that Conway passed two years ago, which means it's already been reviewed by the Office of the State Attorney General and uh, it's been declared constitutional. It effectively says that Sunderland police officers will not function as ICE agents um, to enforce immigration laws here in town. Uh, I checked with Chief Dimitropoulos, if he'd like to speak on this, he's welcome to, but he assured me this will not change any practices of our police department. I'd like to appeal to you that there are two reasons we should pass it anyway. Uh, first of all, we don't know what future state and federal administrations, what, policy, what policies they may put forth, and this may offer a measure of protection to members of our community. And second, I've been told that there is a bill in the state legislature that has been on hold for a while because they are waiting for more municipalities to pass measures like this one as a show of broad support around the Commonwealth. Eric, do you want to comment? Okay. Are there any questions on this? Actually, I have a question. All right. What is the difference between this and a sanctuary community? Speak into the microphone, Linda. I don't know if I'm on. What is the difference between this and a sanctuary community? I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding is that there's no definition to that term. So we could face penalties that were tried to pass in previous communities by a previous administration that wanted to penalize certain communities that were sanctuary cities? I don't have an answer for you. Um, were those penalties ever enforced? I don't were they think upheld? So. I'm, I don't think they were. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have a clear answer for you. Any other questions on Article 17? Yes, Susan. Um, I just wanted to say that the Sunderland Democrats met with Chief Dimitropoulos in, uh, right after the election of 2016 to discuss this with him. And we were very satisfied at the time with the discussion that we had that uh, Sunderland Police was not operating as ICE or immigration or any of it, but I want to support this. And I'm glad to see that we are taking this up as a vote in town to show that we are a safe community. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, our concern, first off, of possible sanctions by the state or other authorities down the line. Second, the necessity of it, if it's not going to make any change in our procedures, which everyone seems to agree the chief's doing a good job with, and uh, uh, wouldn't be changed 
uh, by this. And third, we're talking about this would offer protection about changes in the future, but we don't know which way the wind's going to be blowing in the future and what things we'd be opting out of in the future. We might want them, for example. So I'm not sure this is necessary at this time. Any other questions on Article 17? All right. Um, all those in favor of Article 17, green card, please. All those opposed, the red card. <coughs> Declare passed by majority. Okay, we're on to Article 18. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 18. Second. You want to discuss this? In a nutshell, th what this does is this allows employees, right now they would have had to work an entire year before they were allowed to take any vacation time. So this will allow them so that if they have with a year or more of service, they'll receive two weeks of paid vacation. And I should state that they don't get anything extra. This just allows them to essentially take their vacation after serving six months. They can take half of their vacation. So. Any questions? All right. All those in favor of Article 18, the green card, please. All those opposed, the red card. Uh, they're, they're, uh, declare a pass unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to the. Uh, Consent articles, which are lumped together, 19 through 24. These are housekeeping articles. Um, Mr. Moderate, Mr. Moderator, before I move the question, I'd just like to uh, tell everybody or inform everybody that two weeks ago when we were making plans for the outdoor town meeting, there was a lot of concern about setting rain dates and, and all kinds of other stuff. The town clerk <laughs> assured us without question that today would be a beautiful day. I texted her at 7 o'clock that it was raining outside, and she then proceeded to tell me at 9 a.m. the rain would stop, the sun would come out, and we are going to have a beautiful day. I don't know who the town clerk knows. But the town clerk seemed to be a predictor of weather and fortune at the present time. <laughs> Mr. Mo <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move articles 19 through 24, commonly called our consent articles. Second. Any questions on these articles? All right. All those in favor of article 19 through 24, raise a green card, please. Anyone opposed the red card? Okay, declare a pass unanimously. Thank you. There's one thing left. Mr. Moderator, at this time I'd like to make a motion to dissolve. Do you a second? Uh, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Dissolving 2021's town meeting. Thank you for coming. Pass unanimously. Thank you.